friends! Today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic, transforming electricity into heat and light energy. So let's start. Energy is the ability of the body to do work. If you have more energy, you can do more work. And if you have less energy, you can do less work. Wherever you feel heat or see light, energy is being used there. But what happens when all the energy is used up? How can we make more energy? The answer is, energy is never really used up. Energy can be neither created nor destroyed. It can be converted from one form to another. And this conversion of energy from one form into the other is known as energy transformation. So, energy transformation is the process of changing one form of energy to another form. In our day-to-day -day life, we see numerous appliances working around us, such as the television, refrigerator, music players, fans, air conditioners, and blenders. All of these appliances work with the help of electricity. Electrical energy is a convenient and flexible form of energy. It can be transformed into other forms of energy. Whenever you plug something into a wall socket, you make use of electricity. And that electrical energy transforms into other forms of energy. For instance, the electrical lamp transforms electric energy into light and heat energy. Televisions transform electric energy into light and sound energy. Music players transform electrical energy into sound energy. The ceiling fan transforms electric energy into kinetic energy, as in rotational motion. Friends, have you ever wondered how all of this happens? Let's learn how electricity is converted into light and heat energy. Before walking through the concept behind this conversion, we must know about resistance. Resistance is the opposition offered by the conducting substance to the flow of electrons. I repeat, resistance is the opposition offered by the conducting substance to the flow of electrons. In simple words, resistance means to oppose something. The SI unit of resistance is ohm, and the SI unit of electric current is ampere, and the SI unit of voltage is volts. When an electric current of 1 ampere passes through a conducting substance across which there is a voltage of 1 volt, then the resistance of that component is 1 ohm. This resistance of 1 ohm tries to stop the flow of electric current. Let's take an example to understand the concept of resistance even more. Here we have a pipe through which water is flowing. We often give water to plants using a pipe. What happens if we press the mouth of the pipe with our hands? Water goes farther as it flows with more energy. Why does this happen? When we press the mouth of the pipe, the muscular energy applied by us acts through resistance to the flow of water, and that resistance gets converted into kinetic energy of the water. The Law of Conservation of Energy states that while energy may change from one form to another, energy is neither created nor destroyed. So all the energy that we apply to obstruct the flow of water gets converted into kinetic energy of water. So, when the resistance acts, the energy transforms from one form to the other form. Now, the same thing happens in electric wires. Let's see how. When an electric current passes through a conducting substance, electrons start flowing through the conductor, and every conductor offers some resistance to the flow of electrons, as in, it tries to oppose the flow of electrons. And, as we have discussed earlier, Whenever there is some resistance, energy transforms from one form to another form of energy. In the case of conducting substances like wires, the resistance they oppose transforms to heat energy, 
and the conducting substance gets heated up. This is also called the Joule effect, that every conducting substance heats up when electricity flows through it, and it is due to the resistance that it offers. And the greater the resistance, the greater will be the heating of the conductor. And this property of conductors is used in making electric bulbs. As in the case of incandescent bulbs, the filament is made up of tungsten metal. This has a very high resistance and a very high melting point. So when electricity is passed through this tungsten filament, it becomes so hot that it turns to white and produces light and heat energy. But it does not melt, as it has a very high melting point of 3422 degrees Celsius. And as according to the law of conservation of energy, energy is never used up, it is only transformed from one form to another. So electric energy supplied to an electric bulb produces the same amount of light and heat energy. Now we will learn three types of bulbs by which we can convert the electricity into light and heat energy. The first one is the incandescent bulb. This bulb consists of a thin filament made up of tungsten, which is connected to the positive and negative terminal of the bulb. When the electric energy is provided to the terminals, electricity flows through the tungsten filament. And, as we learned, it has a very high resistance, so a large amount of heat is generated and it turns to red and then white. This thin filament of tungsten is enclosed inside a glass casing. Also, an active gas such as nitrogen is present inside the glass casing. This prevents the burning of the filament. And as the tungsten gets heated and turns to red and then white, it produces a lot of heat and light energy. It is the light of this heated tungsten that we see when we switch on the bulb. Now can you tell me who invented the first incandescent bulb? Of course, he was Thomas Alva Edison, who invented the incandescent bulb in 1879. Let's learn about the second type of bulb, the fluorescent bulb. This bulb is a glass tube in which gases are present to produce ultraviolet light. The tube is coated with phosphor from the inside. When electricity passes through, the gases present inside the glass tube, gases produce ultraviolet light. Phosphor coating on the inside of the glass absorbs the ultraviolet light and starts glowing. Fluorescent light bulbs are also known as CFL, compact fluorescent light. Fluorescent light bulbs last much longer and consume very little amounts of electrical energy as compared to the incandescent bulb. Hence, we can save electricity by using fluorescent bulbs in place of incandescent bulbs. Edward E. Hammer was the first one who invented the first CFL in 1976 in response to the 1973 oil crisis. Now let's learn about the third type of bulb, which are LEDs, or light emitting diodes, or simply diodes that emit light. They do not have a filament, so they don't get hot. They are illuminated just by the movement of electrons through a semiconductor chip. This is a simple diagram of the LED. It consists of a positive and negative electrode connected to a semiconductor material chip attached to them. The movement of electrons across the semiconductor material aluminum, gallium, asinine causes the release of light and the effect is called electroluminescence. The color of light is determined by the energy band gap of the semiconductor. They are extremely small in size, so they are used for making laptops, televisions, mobiles, calculators, traffic lights, store signs, holiday lights, exit signs, flashlights, 
dust lamps, and so much more. The LED has an extremely large lifespan compared to the incandescent bulb. Or we can say they have a lot of advantages over the incandescent and fluorescent bulb. They have high energy efficiency, very long life and ease of maintenance, very compact size, their small size enables the making of dramatically thinner televisions. They contain no mercury. They consume a very small amount of electricity. And did you know who invented the first LED bulb? It was Nick Holignac, who worked very hard to invent the light emitting diode in 1962. Friends, you might have seen your parents cooking food in a microwave oven. Have you ever thought of how food gets cooked in the microwave oven? Where does the heat energy come from? That heat energy comes from the electrical energy, as in the electricity supplied to the oven. Electrical energy gets converted into heat energy that is required to cook the food. Food gets cooked in an electrical appliance, such as microwaves, toasters, induction cookers, etc. These appliances work on the basis of resistance. The wires and materials that are chosen to make these appliances offer high resistance to the flow of electric current. As the resistance is more, more heat will be produced in the appliances. So, electricity is converted in the form of heat energy. We have learned how electricity transforms into heat and light energy.